You know the best thing about being a kid? Everything is great. Even terrible stuff is somehow awesome through a child's eyes. There's no cynicism, no sadness, no going on the internet and moaning. You just exist. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, we all do get older, and as you do, the truth starts to come out. This is especially true when it comes to things that entertain you in your early days, and video games are pretty near the top of that list. What seemed like a revelation actually turns out to be hot garbage. No one likes hot garbage. I'm Simon from What Culture, and this is 10 video games that aren't as good as you remember. Number 10. FIFA in international soccer. Today, FIFA is the standard bearer for football games. It sells millions of copies each year and no one can come close to the power it has. Even Pro Evolution Soccer, which many will argue is better, gets demolished by FIFA. EA's got it in the bag. There was a time, though, where the franchise was utter rubbish. The tide only really started to turn around 2008 and the original entry was so bad you should have been insulted it was ever dished out in the first place. Released way back in 1993, context does have to come into play here. At the time, it did feel like a revelation with its slick animations and crazy level of content, but actually trying to control the thing? Good grief. Coming out on the Mega Drive, EA's decision to make it isometric just didn't gel with Sega's controller at all. It felt like you were trying to rip your fingers from the hands, it was so tough to try and get your guys to do anything, and even a short game would have you in tears by the end. It did allow you to run away from the ref, however, when he tried to book you, and that was good for all the wrong reasons. Number 9. Destruction Derby I loved Destruction Derby as a kid. I remember gleefully waking up in the morning and running downstairs, I was that excited to play it. Play it, I did, getting a massive kick out of every time I just rammed my car into another car. What a wonderful world I lived in. Therein lied the problem, though. After you had smashed two vehicles together, and then done that again, and then done that again, and then again, you started to realize there wasn't anything else you could do. It was fine when you were younger because your brain hasn't fully formed and you're an idiot. But once you're past that, Destruction Derby was more shallow than a kid's inflatable swimming pool. It worked, mind, mainly because it came out on the PlayStation and looked amazing. Visuals will always do wonders for a game's impact on the industry. It's exactly what happened here. Number 8. Guitar Hero Guitar Hero is weird because there was a time when it was very, very good. The equivalent of gaming crack, there was something extremely addictive about mastering it. When you started to understand how to get better, there was a real feeling of satisfaction. It was basically the same as if you were learning the actual guitar, only obviously not as good because you're just a geek in your bedroom. This is where the cracks come into play too. Ultimately, when you played Guitar Hero, you were just pretending to be Lenny Kravitz if Lenny Kravitz was using a plastic instrument that felt like it was made by Fisher Price. On top of that, this time could have been used to practice real music. It certainly had its place and was a massive success, but I think there's a good reason why this was limited to only a few years. Number 7. Pong. The ever-evolving world of technology is very cruel, because what was once revolutionary soon becomes ridiculous. Pong suffers from such an issue badly. Essentially the granddad of all video games, all you need to do was move your white paddle around a black screen and bat the ball back to your opponent. It started a wave that's still growing today and its place in history should not be forgotten. With that said, come on man, this is the most simplistic game in history. If you try and play it for longer than five minutes, you'll go insane. Not only is it well boring, but the constant bleep bloop sound effect are like death for your ears. If you think repetition is the greatest thing in the world you'll like it, that's probably true too if you're a fan of a more minimalistic approach, but time has kicked Pong's ass pretty damn hard. Number 6. Mortal Kombat Back in the day, all games had to have a specific enemy. So it was Nintendo vs Sega, Mario vs Sonic, and of course, Street Fighter vs Mortal Kombat. Both are considered icons in the fighting genre and for good reason, although Mortal Kombat took a slightly different approach in how it wanted to get attention, because it basically promoted murder. No game before Midway's fighter had embraced the idea of killing as much as this, and the novel approach was lapped up by millions of people across the world. If we're to put our critical hats on though, it's fair to say that in terms of the core experience, Street Fighter kicked the crap out of Mortal Kombat. The latter was a bit slow and clunky all things considered, but you could rip a man's heart from his chest. That was good. That's not to say it didn't get better over the years, because it did, and the recent entries have been straight up great. Number 5. Paperboy Sometimes I wonder how games got greenlit. Who was sat in a boardroom one day and said, Right guys, here's what I want. I want you to turn the art of being a paperboy into a game. Go get them. I mean a paperboy. One of the most mundane and boring jobs in the world. Where's the entertainment in that? Why don't you just replicate being well tired and freezing your ass off at 6am in the morning too, as you deliver Mr. Johnson's daily star? But yes, it happened. And paperboy is considered somewhat of a classic. Why, I have no idea. To try and get it to be exciting, 
game, developer Atari made it harder than a smack in the face. There were so many obstacles to try and avoid that it was near impossible to get anywhere without falling off your bike and seemingly being killed. It was incredibly unfair and kept goading you back for more. That was, of course, the idea. Standing tall in an era where the arcade machine was king, it just wanted you to sink coin after coin into it till you had no more coins just mean when you think of it. Number 4. Double Dragon When Double Dragon was released in 1987, it was great. There's no debating that. The side-scrolling beat-em-up was a huge influence on what came after it, and people loved it, me included. From today's perspective, though, it's just very, very basic and has mostly been forgotten, whereas Streets of Rage is remembered as the king of the genre. That's a shame in many ways, as both have their place, but the stark contrast in what has held up is obvious. Streets of Rage 2, for example, is still wonderful, and probably always will be. And that's life, man. That's life. Number 3. Alex Kidd Sega building Alex Kidd in Miracle World into the Master System was genius. They needed a mascot to rival Nintendo's Mario, and the best way to get Kidd over with the masses was to make sure everyone knew who he was, and who wasn't going to play something that was essentially free. Unfortunately, while Alex Kidd did have its moments, it did just feel like the most derivative platformer of all time. Such additions as the Rock Paper Scissors minigames were a lot of fun. It wasn't bad overall, but there's a reason he's deader than Slacks in 2017. He was very much of his time and didn't really offer anything outside of the norm. Also, that theme music will get stuck in your head for hours, so there's another good reason we don't think about him anymore. Number 2. Ridge Racer Launching alongside the original PlayStation, Ridge Racer looked amazing, and that was its whole shtick. Show this off to your friends and feel utterly justified in all the money you spent on a brand new console. It worked as well because everyone went loopy for the thing. It was like your eyes had been invited to the best party there ever had been. Better still, beforehand, Namco's Racer had only been available in arcades, so getting to play it at home felt like you were cheating. There was one glaring issue, mind. It had one track. One. Sure, there was a mirrored version of that track in there as well, but that's like saying if you eat a pizza, throw it up, and then eat your own vomit that you just had two pizzas. You didn't, and you're disgusting. Ridge Racer was really fun to play, I'm not arguing that, but unless you really, really liked this course, the lack of replay value just ruined everything. Number 1. Wii Sports Wii Sports was perfect for Nintendo and the release of the Wii, and I mean perfect. Showing exactly what the machine could do from day one was an easy-to-understand multiplayer experience that appealed to everybody. Adults, kids, mums, dads, grandparents. It was incredible at the time and was a huge reason the console went on to sell as many units as it did. When you drag it out on Christmas Day to play it today, however, things aren't what you remember. It's still a great eyeball into the success motion controls had for a while, but this is essentially what you do with the game Monopoly. You whip it out once a year just to get a brief moment of brevity. It's not exactly the highlight of a game's lifespan, is it? Reduced to a laugh when your nan is on a third whiskey. It will forever have its place in gaming lore, but it's probably now just best left alone. Know of any other video games that aren't as good as you remember? Let us know in the comments below, and then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even come tell me on Twitter at SimonMella316. I'm Simon from What Culture, and I tell you what else isn't as good as you remember. Battletoads. That was rubbish.